Influenced by the music of the 50s and the 60s, the bebop tradition, the era when jazz became art. However, Wellington's six volts look back to the 20s and 30s when jazz was the pop music of the day. For six volts, the cool intellectual approach is out. Fun and communication with the audience is in. They'd like to make that audience as wide as possible. Kaleidoscope found six volts at Crescendo Recording Studios. <laughs> Improvisation is a performance style more commonly seen on stage or in a club than a recording studio. But then it's the uncommon touch that Wellington Group Six Volts strives for. Their jazz influenced style has been described as quirky and innovative. Those are also the trademarks of other performers released under the Braille Records label. Six Volts is the latest evolution of the collective which launched Braille eight years ago. Without council aid, the collective has put out a number of albums, all experimental in essence. Though collective members would often collaborate in various combinations under different names, they all adhered to the common Braille philosophy. Improvisation lay at its heart, as well the music had to be an expression of the group and not the individual. The best known combination from those early Braille years was the primitive art group. The group avoided being shackled to mainstream genres by sticking to pure improvisation, but like other freeform players, they were seen as self-indulgent. It almost had to be for us to discover a lot of the things we did discover. We had, like Sometimes a concert might have had a, an improvisation that could have lasted 45 minutes, which to the listener, it would possibly be hard to handle um, and quite hard, you know, hard to get into and hard to handle, but to the player it wasn't hard at all because they were having fun doing it. So in that sense it was quite indulgent. It was more for the player's sake than for the listener's sake. Not surprisingly, the music only enjoyed limited audience appeal. However, a change of name and lineup and a few style modifications brought greater recognition. The new permutation was called Four Volts. Though still offbeat, the music was more accessible, like this video version of Light My Fire, produced by the group. You know that I would be untrue. I were to say to you Oh man, we couldn't get much higher Providing that powerful vocal lead, opera trained Janet Roddick. On drums, founding Braille member Anthony Donaldson with younger brother David on double bass. And finishing off the quartet, saxophonist Neil Duncan. Eventually, guitarist Dave Long and trumpetist Steve Roach joined and Six Volts was born. The current configuration strays even more toward populism. They tailor their material to the audience, whether in a restaurant, pub or club. As the musical force behind the downstage production of the Thrupney Opera at this year's Arts Festival, Six Volts earned a reputation for versatility and freshness. They try to keep their appeal as broad as possible through playing a range of venues. Concert audiences like this one at the National Gallery allow them to show their experimental side. I hate your guts, Johnny, when you stand there and grin, Johnny. Take that damn pipe out of your mouth, you rat. Asura Bajan. No one's meaner than you were. Asura Bajan. Oh my God, and I still love you so. Asura
Achieving a unified sound through improvisation isn't a case of just letting it happen. It requires discipline. Rehearsal takes up many hours each week. The aim of today's session, though, is to create a new track for their first album. I wrote it with a pop tune in mind, thinking right, okay. I'd like to have a pop tune sort of on the album. But it, but once said that it wants to be as warped as possible and as unlike mm. a pop tune, as unlike you'd hear anyone else We've got a lot doing of a pop tune. Alright, let's do it. One, yeah. two, one, two, three, four. The name of the game is consensus. In keeping with the collective spirit, everybody contributes to the creative process. There is no leader. But making decisions by committee is also painstaking. Let's do it with the guitar so we can try and basically emulate the guitar's trombone rhythm. It's more just creating, like, like well, that could be created, sort of... I, I'm doing, like, far, far more than you do in a jazz thing, because I'd just be doing one chord in the bar, whereas I'm doing lots of different things. Play the B section? The melody is not... I'm, I'm like just playing jazz. straight anyway. at the moment. Yeah. Well, communication's so hard, because there's six of us. We've all got things to say and well in any group there's troubles with people talking and not enough listening I think we have a bit of trouble with listening and we end up with more than one person talking at once two conversations going on at once and that makes it really difficult you know like there'd be three different ideas to try it so you, you do them all and so it takes some time whereas if there's one person directing it you know you could do it it'll be much quicker but with different ideas you sort of try them all out but then um, yeah what you come out with in the end is much different usually better. The guitar gives it, we're getting a, it gives it an exotic feel and I'm trying to figure out you where mean we want Spanish that. You sort of feel, you mean? Hawaiian, Fiji. We well, could call exotic. this one flamenco disco. <laughs> been done. <laughs> but maybe you know, the guitar. The of this tune, so by the way? Lost love as always. Lost love as always. Right. As so always. we can't put any Spike Jones elements in, really, can we? Yeah, yeah. Jones, definitely. Because yeah. it's very tongue in right. Famous Spike Jones. <laughs> Okay. I think we try to create an atmosphere where if one person's feeling on top of things, um, they're inspired or just musically on top of things, then they can have the chance to express themselves, you know, to develop something within the group. And that's sometimes happened where it might be one person for a few days is, feels they've got all the ideas and they're really strong and, and, and they put them forward. And, and other times it's often three or four people have got ideas, so that's when a lot more discussion uh, comes into it. Do you want to try that trumpet thing you're doing? The four? Yeah. Well, no. I'd have to finish my biscuit first. <laughs> do the... You know, we have a lot of problems, like you <laughs> But um, we do actually think pretty much a lot along the same lines. We're all friends, we all have the same sort of views, generally. And, um, and socialising together and things like that is like a big part of, I'd say, why it, why it works. While on holiday together, there's only one firm rule, no discussing music. Otherwise, it's a pretty freeform affair, with the emphasis on relaxation. Our job is a, a social job. Uh, we're playing in restaurants and nightclubs. After that, you know, uh, that's our social time. We also try and spend some time together away from music, where we can just forget it and get over all the tensions that build up during our sort of work thing, which they do. <laughs> and then a chance for us to get away, as in Castle Point, go away and have a holiday together and just get on as friends again. To me, the friendships is just as important as the music, and often that's why I feel the music is so good when it is good, because there is that loyalty there.
band of a thousand moods is how their press release describes them, and what's noticeable is that even off duty, a feeling of unity prevails. But days later, it's back into the rehearsal rooms to whip this original Six Volt song into shape. Constant performance commitments have left them little time for creating their own compositions. The new album gives them the opportunity to extend the repertoire. I, I reckon for, you know, head solos, head and out. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, because this is such a song, I how you talk over the field. A lot of country tunes. Darling. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Well, I don't think we can sort of plan that out. Maybe that might come around, but... Um, but you've got to know what to say, though. Yeah, I know that. That's right. But you've got to get some ideas to start with, rather than you say, OK, here's 16 bars, now you just do that talking. That's oh, no, no, no. No, I'm saying, like, I'm telling Dave hey, Long that he should I, write some blah, blah, blah. parts specifically for talking as opposed to singing. Oh, I see. Dave Long and lyricist. So let's... The very thought makes you smile, but we'll just act normal. But all the while I turn funny shades of red on the lane. I thought we were meant for each other. And now you treat me like your brother. How I wish I'd never sent that letter. Or even bet you sent me a letter. traditional jazz rhythms to the likes of country or reggae is a typical six volts ploy. The result, music with a hard, unexpected edge. In a standard jazz setting, you've got the melody of the piece and you've got the chords of the piece, and you can improvise using basically both those, using either the melody working around that or working around the chords of the piece. The way we do it is actually quite different. Oh, We work a lot on moods, and we work on. Um, so we might we work out beforehand what what the mood of the piece is and the style we're doing it in. We might take a different style, for instance, and um, also humour, like whether we how much humour we're putting into the piece. I wonder what a ukulele would sound like on it. I think it'll sound like Tony Tim and the Bees, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh dear. You know, we all got the same ideas on the humour. We all want yeah. the, to have the humorous side. We don't want to be taking ourselves really seriously, and that's a real danger with sort of, you know, so-called arty things that people are, you know, really serious and. Uh... We don't even want to be slick. <laughs> you know, like we're not. None of us are slick players, and it's not even something we normally achieve. We probably will get sort of slicker as it goes along, and it's probably not a bad thing because we're pretty loose generally. Okay, All so right. just basically just play on the... No, it's called AAB, and then you stop. We, we, stop. Stop. we don't never do AAB, though. We are the instrumental. Uh, okay, so it's you haven't been listening. counting 32 bars, then the B. Yeah. Okay, one, go for it. Two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Initially, Braille Collective members had to put up with digs over their proficiency as musicians. These days, it tends to be all praise. The biggest challenge for the group during a recording session is to keep improvisation happening. A tight structure may be agreed upon, but there's plenty of leeway for spontaneity. Close attention is paid to what instruments are featuring. It's easy to let the music become too cluttered. Braille releases were small, personal, and sometimes rough. Here, the vaults are looking for a well produced sound with wider appeal. I thought, oh no, he's finished doing right, it. Right, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, this is a really Is that the solo you wouldn't sound like Paul Desmond on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with mine as well. Do you want to just, just do it? Just that little bit of guitar at the very beginning. Is oh, that yeah, supposed to be there? Yeah, sort of like a very beginning. Let's hear it. It's pretty good. 
Can we have another look at sure my side? Well, it's definitely a good in entrance. Oh, so it seemed like you sort of like cool yeah, and then stop and then come in. Oh, on Consultation is always evident. Though this song was written by Dave Long, it has quickly become the property of the group. The final multi-track mix won't get the stamp of approval till everyone's satisfied. Can we just to come take that out? Yeah. Okay. The Catano. Yeah. That bum before it all starts. Well, then maybe that'll go well with the answer phone. <laughs> The answer phone. Yeah, and the um, farmyard the noises. No, I haven't. Is this one of Anthony's ideas? <laughs> no. It's sort of... Now, what have we got to go? Well, we've got backing, backing vocals. vocals. It might have been a good one, but not every suggestion works. This backup vocal track didn't make it onto the final mix. After an all day session at Crescendo Recording Studios, there's still one last thing to be laid down and added to that definitive version. It could be worse this feeling down, well, I still blush even now when I think of how I read the signals wrong. Debate over how the treatment could have been improved upon can and will go on for the rest of the evening. However, the time's arrived to put differences aside and listen to the product. Track number one passes the litmus test. The group hopes the record will deliver them a new listenership and with the right distribution deal, maybe even an international one. But whether the record brings them commercial success or not, the vaults will continue to find their greatest satisfaction in live performance. The Arts Council has just awarded Six Volts a $10,000 composer's grant to help finish the album. Their next theatre project will be the music for a downstage production on the life of radio personality Aunt Daisy. And now, from jazz to poetry. ...and energy than practically anything else that appeared throughout the 1960s. And I think that's a, quite a, a mean feat, really. He started reading off everything I'd ever done, um, B-sides of songs that had never been released, things I said to somebody that had said to somebody else, and places I'd been that I'd totally... That I just suddenly realised this guy knew my life 